All right, let's talk about one of the coolest, but also one of the most frustrating things you can do in a home lab, GPU pass-through. It's supposed to be awesome, right? But what happens when you try to give your VM that shiny new graphics card, and instead of just crashing the VM, it completely kills your entire server? Yeah. We're going to get into a wild one today. And that quote really says it all. This isn't your average run-of-the-mill bug. We're not talking about a little blue screen or an app that stops responding. Nope. This is the whole machine, the host itself, going completely dark. The kind of failure where you have to physically press the power button and just hope everything comes back online. So, let's start at the beginning. We're looking at what should have been a dream setup. I mean, this thing was built to be a powerhouse, but it quickly turned into a total nightmare. I mean, just look at this hardware. A monster Ryzen 9 CPU, a massive 128 gigs of RAM, a brand new NVIDIA GPU, all running on Proxmox with a super resilient ZFS storage array made of four SSDs. On paper, this machine should have been unstoppable. But as we found out, something was very, very wrong. So here's the scenario. You fire up your Windows or Linux virtual machine. You've configured it to use that beefy RTX graphics card. And the very second, literally the instant, the VM tries to grab control of that GPU, the entire host computer just locks up. Hard freeze, no mouse, no keyboard, no network, nothing, just dead. Okay, so with a dead host, you can't really troubleshoot in real time. The only thing you can do is reboot the machine and immediately start digging through the system logs. You gotta become a digital detective and look for clues from right before the crash. And bingo, here's our first big clue, buried in the logs. You see two things happening at once. The system tries to reset the GPU, that's the VFIO PCI part, but at the exact same time, it throws a huge warning that the main storage pool, the R pool, where all the data lives, has had a catastrophic I.O. failure. So how on earth does resetting a graphics card cause all of your storage drives to just give up? This is where the real investigation begins. Running this simple command to check the IMMU groups, well, it revealed the smoking gun. It turns out that the GPU and the storage controller, two things that should be completely separate, were lumped together by the system into the very same IMMU group. And that, well, that's a recipe for disaster. And that brings us to the million dollar question. Why? Why would hitting the reset button on the GPU also take out the totally separate controller for your hard drives? They should be in their own little worlds. To figure this out, we've got to understand the thing that's supposed to be keeping them separate, the IMMU. Okay, let's hit pause on the detective story for just a second. We need to do a quick explainer on a piece of tech you've probably heard of, but maybe aren't super familiar with. It's called the IOMMU, and it is the absolute unsung hero of all virtualization. So what is it? Think of the IOMMU as a traffic cop for all your hardware. Its main job is to create these invisible fences, or sandboxes, around your PCI devices like your GPU. When you pass that GPU through to a VM, the IOMMU is what makes sure the VM can only see and talk to the GPU, and it can't go rogue and start messing with anything else in the system. It's a security feature. And here's the perfect analogy. Having the GPU and the storage controller in the same IOMMU group is like wiring your grand new gaming PC and your kitchen refrigerator to the same circuit breaker. If the PC trips the breaker, your fridge full of food goes down with it. That's exactly what was happening here. The GPU reset was tripping a virtual circuit breaker that was for some reason also connected to the storage. So now we know the problem. The motherboard is grouping these devices together in a really dumb way. So how do we fix it? We can't exactly get out a soldering iron, but what we can do is tell the operating system to just ignore the motherboard's bad advice and create its own better groups. And that's where something called the ACS override comes in. This visualizes it perfectly. Before the fix, on the left, you see the problem. The GPU and the storage controller are both stuck together in group 17 bad. After the fix, on the right, is what we want. The GPU gets its own nice, clean Group 19, and the storage controller gets its own isolated Group 21. They can't hurt each other anymore. And getting to that after state is, believe it or not, pretty easy. It's a simple four-step fix. You just have to edit one text file, add a special command, tell Proxmox to update its boot settings, and then reboot the whole machine. 
That's it. And this, this is the line of code that saves the day. It's a kernel parameter called PCIe ACS override. By adding this, you're essentially telling the Linux kernel, hey, I don't care what the motherboard says about grouping. You're going to break these devices up into their own separate downstream groups. It's like you're manually overriding a bad factory setting. In the result, after that simple change, it was just perfect. The server reboots, you start the VM, the GPU drivers load inside the VM, and the host doesn't even flinch. It just sits there, completely stable and happy. No freezes, no crashes, everything just works smooth as silk. So what did we learn from this whole terrifying episode? This story is a fantastic case study with some really important lessons for anyone running their own Proxmox server or home lab. So let's boil it all down into a few key takeaways. Here are the four big rules to live by. First, always check your IMMU groups before you even attempt pass-through. Just do it. Second, if you're on a consumer motherboard, like most of us are, you should almost expect to need this ACS override trick. Third, and this is a big one, a kernel update can shuffle your IMMU groups around and break your working setup, so always recheck after an upgrade. And finally, remember that ZFS is amazing, but it absolutely hates it when its hardware just disappears without warning. And that really brings us to the final thought here. The fix worked, and the system is stable now. But this whole adventure is a great reminder that, in the world of home labs and virtualization, nothing is ever truly finished. Your setup might be rock solid today, but are you ready for what the next kernel update or hardware change might throw at you? Something to think about. Thanks for tuning in.